wonder hussy here on the shores of fabulous and desolate Mono Lake. I just rolled in here to a campsite I found and well, this one I just kind of found randomly driving around. It's real hot right now in the West. We're in the middle of a heat wave. Everything's like 100, 105 degrees. The place I wanted to go is not only 105 degrees, but it's also on fire. So I had to think fast and find another place to camp in the area. And so here I am. But I figured this would actually be a good chance to talk about how I do choose a campsite as a solo female traveler. I do have to be mindful of my safety. So how I choose a campsite and also what improvements I've made to my car camping game since I made my very first video about the subject, the girl's guide to car camping in a Toyota 4Runner. I covered pretty much all the bases in that video, but it's been a few years now and I have refined my technique a bit. There's a few new things, tips and techniques and products I'd like to share with you. The first thing I do when I roll into camp is orient my rig, depending on if it's hot or cold. Now today is super broiling hot, so I pointed my nose into the sun so that I'd have a nice little patch of shade here cast by my tailgate when it's open and I can sit there and wait until the sun goes down a bit and things won't be so unbearable. Uh, the downside to this orientation is in the morning the sun's gonna come up over there and well, I'll be brushing my teeth and washing my face and everything in blasting sunlight. So I might end up turning my car around after I shoot this video. Okay, so after I oriented my car, I went ahead and put up uh, my uh, sunshade in the windshield just to keep some of the heat out of the vehicle. And then the second thing that I do is open up my tailgate and now I can get at all my goodies. Okay, I don't roll with a ton of stuff when I'm camping solo. I'm kind of a minimalist, but I do like to have a little camp chair. Uh, then I take out my Max Tracks or I guess Max Tracks is a brand name. My recovery traction tracks, whatever you call these things. When you get stuck in sand or mud, you put them under your tires uh, to help you get out. Cause you know, I do a lot of off-roading in rough areas and I'm almost always by myself. So if I get stuck, I'd like to be able to get myself out without having to be one of those annoying people that calls one of them rescue groups. I mean, you can see, I don't have one of them fancy overlander rigs with a Max Tracks strapped on the roof and a high lift jack and a gas can and a winch and all that. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of feel like the more gear you carry, the fewer places you go in general. Of course, generally speaking, that's not always the case, but I don't even have a, a roof rack, any of that. I don't even have a cargo box. I have to carry all this stuff inside my rig, which, yeah, you know, maybe I will end up at least getting a roof rack at some point because I, you know, it is kind of dirty putting your recovery tracks and stuff on the place you sleep. But hey, for now, it's working out. Okay, I also carry a toolbox that one of my friends gave me just in case, you know, something goes wrong. And then this is actually really cool. This is one of the new products uh, I was talking about. Believe it or not, it's a table. It's a camp table that folds up like a chair. Check this out. This is one of the coolest things I've seen. Okay, here's the legs and here's the tabletop. Super easy to assemble. The legs just pop out. Then you just pop these crossbars on and then the tabletop just sort of unrolls and pops right on the top like that. There. <laughs> now you have yourself a solid little table that really didn't take any room at all in the car. Uh, I'll be honest though, I am a total minimalist when I camp by myself, so I very, very, very seldom even bother to set that up. Now the inside of the car is pretty much ready to go as is. I mean, you can see I roll around with my bed already made and you know how i was saying like oh i don't have like all this fancy overlanding gear on the exterior of the car well the interior of the car is totally minimalist as well if you watch my first video that i'll put a link to here uh, i show you the whole details of how i make my bed and like prepare the car for a camping trip but you can see there i really just folded down half of the seat i didn't remove either of the back seats i didn't take anything out i didn't bolt anything down i didn't build any fancy cabinets or drawers and yeah well i'm just a part-timer if i lived in this forerunner permanently like uh there are people who, plenty of people who do live in suvs full-time then i probably would do some permanent modifications but you know i'm just a part-timer at this point in my life i probably spend like 75% of the time sleeping in the car, 25% of the time at home at my house. So between 50 and 75% of the time I spend in the car. And so for me personally, I prefer to keep it 
factory stock so that way when i am at home i can just fold the seats back up fold the bed up put everything in the back and bada bing bada boom i've got a regular soccer mom car again and well nobody would ever be the wiser that i'm a well that i'm secretly a dirty hippie who loves to travel around and sleep in my car okay so all of this is probably familiar to you from my first video about camping in the car uh, the only thing i built was the f the f um floor of the car wasn't totally flat because of a complicated issue having to do with the rear slide out cargo deck so i did have to build this little platform which is just a piece of plywood on some two by fours uh so i do have a tiny little bit of storage down there but all i keep down there is a tray and a cutting board for cutting up fruits and veggies because i am trying to eat healthier on the road and to that end well i did finally start rolling around with a cooler i was very anti-cooler for a long time and to be honest i still kind of am because uh gosh it's just a pain having to mess with getting ice all the time but uh a kind fan in my in my other video i mentioned like maybe thinking about getting a cooler well after watching that somebody did send me this really nice yeti cooler and yeti's top of the line you know they're very well insulated even then though i feel like i gotta get ice every few days depending on how hot the weather is and well it's kind of a pain but i do like uh that it gives me the ability to eat fresh veggies and try to be healthier okay so now that i've got all the big bulky items uh taken out well the next thing i do is i have this here's a new product another new product i've started using it's a a solar flask made by a brand called prepper's peak <laughs> i love that name prepper's peak i guess it's made for people who are prepping for the apocalypse that kind of thing so the idea is you fill it with water and then close the lid tightly and then this kind of opens up these two wings open up and the handle folds back and goes into these little notches here and then it you set it up on the little handle facing directly into the sun i guess that's like a 45 degree angle or whatever the optimal angle for heating is and well because of this mirrored stuff on the inside of these wings and then this is mirrored on the inside too i think well you'll have hot water without having to use your camp stove and well i'll be honest i've been using this thermal flask solar flask i'm not sure what you call it i've been using it for a while now and i'm torn uh, at first i thought it was useless because it takes like even in direct sunlight like here right now well, sun's going down now, but uh, earlier in the day, it, even at the hottest part of the day, it would probably take like 45 minutes, maybe a half hour to get water hot enough for a cup of coffee. Uh, supposedly, I read online where people will like boil eggs and hot dogs in it. <laughs> I mean, if you have plenty of time to sit around and wait for dinner, go for it. Uh, for me, generally, I just use it for wash water. I like to wash my face morning and night with warm or hot water. You know, even when I'm in the middle of nowhere, I like my little luxuries. So typically what I do when I get to camp, one of the first things I do is set that baby up there. So by the time I do get ready for bed, I'll have warm or hot water to wash my face. And then I'll also refill it overnight and I'll put it on top of the car pointing towards the direction I think the sun is going to come up. Now again, I'm not always right about that, but if I get it right, then I'll wake up with some warm water in the morning too. And then I can wash my face in the morning with warm water as well. I give it a seven out of 10. And by the way, I'll put links to all these products in the description to this video so if you want to check any of them out you can okay so not much has changed with the type of stuff i carry back here um, i'm still traveling with five gallons of water i stay very clean and neat here i'm very girly i mean as you can see i've got one size bin for all my kitchen stuff and an identical size bin that's just for my face stuff so you know i'm a girl i like to stay nice looking uh armpits notwithstanding <laughs> like i said i have two bins this one here is all my kitchen stuff uh, I'm not much for cooking. <laughs> uh, I just do a lot of boil in the bag food. Like if you've watched some of my other videos, uh, I do a lot of these like tasty bites, boil in the bag, rice, beans, lentils, Indian food. Uh, they've got all kinds of stuff and it's basically it's pre-cooked. It just needs to be heated up. Okay, just like in my last car camping video, I'm still rolling with the same little backpacking stove. You just screw that onto the top of a uh, butane propane canister. But let me tell you something. This type of fuel is really hard to find in the summertime. I, it always sells out at Walmart and I have a devil of a time finding it. And yes, I have considered other stoves. For a while there, I was using one of those little one burner butane stoves that you buy the, you know, the long skinny butane canisters for. And to be honest, I wasn't a fan of that. I like the profile of the stove. It's flat. It packs up into that neat little suitcase. But the butane goes so fast. I found, you know, one can of butane would only last me two or three days. And that was just to boil water morning and night. So... 
I'm not a fan of the butane stoves. I really don't want to get one of those big two burner Coleman, you know, the green Coleman camp stove that everybody has. Even though they're a classic, tried and tested, they're just, it's too big. I only need one burner. So I think what I might try next is they make that single burner that screws, it's kind of like this, but it screws on the top of one of those green Coleman propane canisters. And then there's like a little base you set it on so it doesn't fall over. I think I might try that next because you can find those green canisters just about everywhere, but not so the case with these. So I have to be very uh, conservative with my fuel usage. And to that end, here's another little device I started using. This thing here really revolutionized my game. It's just a shield. It's a simple folding shield that you put around the stove like that. And then if it's real windy, you can even latch it together so it doesn't blow over. And what it does is it shields the flame uh, from the wind. So the flame not only um, doesn't blow out or flicker, it also stays hotter, I think. Um, I think even like the more you wrap this around, the hotter it stays. I'm not sure you want to do it too close though because the butane can might explode. But I have noticed that using that little shield does make a pretty substantial difference, especially when it's windy, like it's kind of windy right now. Um, so I'll be using that for sure. Okay, and then another couple innovations that I have here in my little camp box. It, uh, this is cool. This is a USB powered lighter. Uh, I'm sure these things have been around for a while. I, I just hadn't heard of them until someone sent me one. Basically, you turn it on like that. Okay, it shows you this one's got three out of four. It's pretty well charged, but look at it. Ah! It's like a little electrical spark that lights. Well, in this case, it would light the fuel on the camp stove. And let me tell you something, this thing really works. And this one here is a gooseneck, look at that. It's got a flexible neck so you can you know, bend it in all kinds of weird directions if you have to. I can't say enough good things about this. You'll never run out of lighter fluid. Your lighter will never go dead. All you have to do is plug it into your cigarette lighter while you're driving. Game changer, at least in my world. Okay, one more thing. I don't think I had these last time I made a video. These are cool. These are bowls. Look at that. Viewer sent me these, and I just think they're so cool. Bowl with a lid. So it could be a bowl, it could be a plate. Folds up flat, bada bing, bada boom. Now you've got room for two in your box with your stove and all your pots and pans. That's my pot that I use to boil water for food. And then I did recently branch out because I was just using one pot to wash my face and cook food, but I was wasting water having to rinse it out in between. So I did get a second pot and this one I use just for washing. So I keep my soap in there. And then what I do at night is, you know, I'll take my water from the solar flask, which is supposedly heating up there on the hood. And then I'll take my little washcloth down here where I hung it up to dry. I'll put that in there. I'll pour the water on it. I'll lather up and I'll wash my pretty little face. And speaking of that, well, you might wonder, how do I see my pretty little face. Okay, this is my toiletries box, which as I mentioned is the same size as my entire kitchen box. But you know, I take things seriously. And for my mirror, well, I got one of those magnetic mirrors that sticks on the side of the car. Yeah, but it's, it's problematic, or I found it to be problematic because there's only so much of the car that's actually metal that it'll stick to. And it's never in an area that it's convenient for me and at my eye level. So I just decided it'd be a lot easier if I could just hang it right here like that and okay it's been what four years since i made my last how to camp in my car video i just came up with this innovation uh last week i had a tent stake that i found at a campsite somebody left behind and I just duct taped it to the back of this so now i can hang my mirror up anywhere pretty cool okay well nothing else in my hygiene toilet box has changed since uh my last video so i'm not going to go into all that uh, i don't think any of this has changed either this is my suitcase with some lesser used items in it. That's all my clothing and a duffel bag. Oh, I guess I should mention behind my water is uh, an air compressor, uh, just in case I need to air my tires down or I get a flat or something. Oh, you know, one other thing that I generally do right away when I first get to camp is uh, I got a cell signal booster, okay? And they're not cheap. I got a Wii Boost. It's like $500. Uh, if I'm at a place where I only have like one tiny little bar, then I'll set this thing up. And let me tell you something. It's, it was 500 bucks, but it works. Okay, basically it's three parts. Uh, this is the signal booster. So you put that inside the car. And then this is the power adapter. So you plug that into the Wii Boost here. And then this end, I plug into my Jackery power bank. Which, by the way, I guess I should mention that too. I'm not sure I had it when I made my last video, but this has been a real game changer. Uh, they did send me this one for free in exchange for making a video about it, but I don't care, man. I would go to bat for them anyways, because 
I can't say enough good things about these little Jackery products because I'm an idiot when it comes to solar panels and power and house batteries and all that kind of thing. This is so easy. I just plug it in. This thing here plugs into my cigarette lighter in my car. So I charge it while I'm driving. But if I did need to juice it up while I was stationary, well, guess what? I can do that too, because I also have these solar panels that came with it. And this is, this is cool. I mean, obviously this isn't the right time to demonstrate this because the sun's going down and uh, well, it's not gonna give them any charge, but check this out. So easy, even I can do it. I mean, it, you literally just plug this cord in. You probably see that? And then you just set these panels up at a 45 degree angle, like I was supposed to do with that prepper flask. And let me tell you something, it works. I mean, these are the small panels. Look, it's just like a little suitcase size. So obviously these aren't gonna generate as much power as like, well, I also have like the bigger ones, they make bigger ones. And those will definitely charge this little guy up in no time flat. So, you know, if I'm traveling around and only staying in a place for a night or two nights, this will be plenty of power for me. But if I'm someplace where I'm gonna be posted up for a few days, then yes, I do bust out those solar panels. And yes, they do work. Oh yeah, but I got distracted. I was talking about the Wii Boost. So basically you just stick this magnetic antenna uh, on top of the car in the middle towards the front. There's two antennas. There's the one that goes on the roof and that's connected here to the, the amplifier. And then there's another antenna that you're supposed to put, uh, I think as far away from the roof antenna as you can. And it's got a little bit of Velcro on it. So I just Velcro it all the way in the back here. And then I run that wire all the way up to the amplifier. So both of those are plugged into this. And then the power is plugged into my Jackery here. And well, when I turn it on, it should boost my signal. See, I already had three bars of 4G, so I didn't even really need to mess with all this, but just for fun, let's see what I get when I turn on the Wii Boost. Hit the power. Green light, that means the signal, it, the amplifier is working. Oh ho, now I have almost full five bars of 4G, pretty good. You know, that'd be important to me if I had to upload a video or, you know, I had some serious work to do. Uh, I don't right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off because I wanna save the juice in my Jackery because I need to do some work on my laptop later. Oh, maybe I do still kind of need these, but I don't know, sun will be down soon. Uh, matter of fact, yes it is, it's getting kind of dark. And well, you know, single female traveling alone, I gotta be mindful of my surroundings and my safety. Generally, I feel a lot safer out in the middle of nowhere like this than I would in the city. But I very, very, very rarely camp in the city. Yes, occasionally I've had to sleep in a parking lot or on a city street. And I don't really enjoy doing that for a number of reasons. The number one thing I dislike about doing that is going to the bathroom, okay? You know what I'm talking about. You gotta pee and it's a pain. I mean, if you're a guy, it's a little bit easier. You can just get a Gatorade bottle and pee into that. Uh, I did address this in the other video I made about car camping, but I have made a huge refinement to my pee situation since then. And I actually think this is something that all lady car campers need to know. Check this out. Here's my emergency bathroom right here, tucked away discreetly behind my broom and this nice decorative pillow that my friend stole me from the first class section on Fiji Airways. <laughs> it's a laundry detergent bottle. And I know you're probably like, what's the big deal about a laundry detergent bottle? Well, let me tell you something. There's a couple really good things about using this. I don't want to be able to see my pee. So I like the fact that this is totally opaque. There could be anything in here and no one would know. A, B, if I have to take it in to dump it in a toilet somewhere, well, it looks like I'm just going to do my laundry. I mean, I suppose that could be kind of obvious in some places, but this is one of those little mini detergent bottles. So it'll fit in a backpack real easy. No one has to know, uh, but it's big enough, 50 ounces. Okay, this is big enough to get just about anyone, even after you've been drinking all night through uh, a night in the car. But the best thing about this laundry detergent bottle, in my opinion, as a woman, now as a man, you might not want to use a laundry detergent bottle, but as a woman, here's why I recommend using this. It's the pour spout, okay? You know how laundry detergent bottles have that weird pour spout? Well, guess what? It's the perfect size to put your sheenness in. You know those little pee funnels they make for women? It fits right into the spout and it's pretty stable. You know what I mean? Like when I was using a Nalgene bottle, like trying to balance this, I guess they call them pee funnels, sheenness. I've heard all kinds of different names for it. Uh, I think this was called a pee easy. It's just cumbersome to do it with a Nalgene bottle, but this, it fits in. Sorry, I don't mean to gross anybody out, but uh, yeah, it just fits in perfectly into that hole there and stays put. And then you can just angle it to do your business and you don't have to worry about it 
flopping around all over the place. This really has revolutionized my car peeing game. And then of course it all just fits right back here, out of sight, out of mind, behind all my other stuff, and my fancy decorative Fiji Airlines pillow. No one would even know it's there. Well, except for the fact that I just told everyone watching this video that it's there. Okay, but now that it is starting to get dark, uh, I guess it's a good time to start talking about lighting. You know, how do I see once it gets dark? This is another innovation I came up with that again has revolutionized my camping game and just made everything a thousand times cozier ta-da uh okay it's probably not that impressive because it's still pretty light outside but what i did is i basically strung a, a long string of led fairy lights all around the interior of the car and then it was a really really long string of lights so all the extra lights i just kind of clustered up like a little mini chandelier here well i'll show you when it gets dark it actually creates a very nice warm cozy glow and it doesn't add any weight at all to the car it was super easy to do i mean basically i just used these little velcro patches to hold these lights up and then the power cord goes down 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 the corner here down well down where my toilet is actually <laughs> i just have them plugged into a little battery bank in a bag and you know about once a week i have to recharge that battery bank but that's easy to do using my jackery oh but speaking of usb lights i have something else down here it's not just toilet <laughs> I've got this bin that has some like headlamps and flashlights and stuff in it. This is a USB rechargeable headlamp, okay? Plug it in and charge it up and it's just, re it's really lightweight, man. Like this is the whole front, this is the whole light. And then the battery pack's pretty light too. This one's made by BioLite. There's probably, you know, other brands that make this particular kind of headlamp, but oh my gosh, this thing is so much more comfortable and lightweight than uh well, I was wearing a, a Craftsman brand USB headlamp, and I did like that, but it had a really chunky battery pack, and it was just kind of cumbersome. This thing here weighs next to nothing, and you just USB recharge it up whenever you need to. Bada bing, bada boom. Super easy. Love it. I gotta stop saying bada bing, bada boom. Snicker snack. How about that? Before I wrap up this video, there's a couple more products I have to tell you about that also revolutionized my camping game. Okay, uh, the first one is called a My Joe. Now, if you're a coffee drinker like me, you understand the struggle of trying to make good coffee when you're camping. And I've experimented with several different methods. Instant coffee is what I usually end up falling back on, but uh, somebody was telling me that that's actually not very good for you, instant coffee, because you're drinking the coffee solids and they can accumulate in your liver over time. So if you're camping a lot, like I do, and drinking a lot of instant coffee, well, it's not very really good for you. So then I've tried a French press, but I find those to be cumbersome and messy. I've tried uh, those old timey percolator coffee pots, but that's just a pain because again, it's messy and there's always grounds in your coffee. I mean, I've tried even just cowboy coffee where you boil it with the grounds in it and just suck them through your teeth. I tried the pour over method, which is where you put that little basket directly over your coffee cup with the grounds in it. And you just pour the water slowly into it, but Again, ain't nobody got time for that. I don't have the patience. So this My Joe is actually uh, a way to make K-cups. You know, like those little uh, cups full of coffee, like for your Keurig coffee maker at home? Only this makes one without using any electricity. Okay, I'm not gonna make an actual cup of coffee right now because it's almost bedtime. But basically what you do is you can put a pre-made, uh, like a Starbucks pot or whatever in here, or this is a refillable one. So you can put whatever kind of coffee you want in there. And then you just screw this on and then you place it over your coffee cup you know opening over your coffee cup and then you just pour your hot water in there and there's even a handy dandy little measurement on the side pour it up to like 10 ounces and then you just push on this cap and make sure it's sealed tightly all the way around and then you just press on it and it forces the coffee to trickle through the k-cup into your mug and again if i was demonstrating this full of water you'd be able to hear it it makes like that same like trickling sound well that's what this thing does it's some kind of i guess it's like vacuum sealed or whatever amazing i can't get enough of this thing i think it, it this is the best camping coffee i've found now my sister doesn't like it because she said it's too cumbersome it's too bulky to fit in her kit and that is a drawback like it's kind of a, a big thing but it's no bigger than a french press or one of those cowboy coffee pot thingies so for me it's worth it okay now the last thing i gotta talk about is Maybe my favorite thing of all. It's called a Radiate Portable Campfire. It's essentially a campfire in a can. Okay, uh, unfortunately, I used this one all up. Uh, when I was camping at the coast a couple days ago, it was, believe it or not, even though it's like 150 degrees here, it was like 
half of that literally at the coast it was cold and damp and chilly and i was camping right on the beach so well i lit my little portable campfire in a can and i just sat there drinking hot cocoa and burned the whole dang thing down and i mean it's essentially just a giant candle is what it is it's super easy to light it's made out of recycled wax recycled paper you just light one of the little bits of paper that are sticking out once you get it lit man it puts off a nice flame it actually puts off a decent amount of heat and well i can personally attest to this from my experiment at the beach it'll burn solid for at least i would say three hours you know you're camping someplace and you don't want to have to mess with putting up a whole you know dig in a fire ring you don't want to have to babysit a fire you just want a quick little fire some ambiance before going to bed without messing with a real fire it was it was pretty cool anyway i hope you enjoyed this little update slash informative how-to video on how anybody even a ding dong gal like me can comfortably travel in a totally unmodified unoverlanded out to its teeth toyota 4runner you could do it i do it i encourage you don't be scared look at me i'm out here blabbling to myself on my cell phone and there's nobody around to hear me there's nothing to be afraid of you know as long as you take the necessary precautions the world is yours ladies and gentlemen too <laughs> anyway hope to see all of you out on the trail sometime just not too close to my campsite